Howdy, my name is David Maxwell. This is the third video in our series on using the single cell battery fuel gauge evaluation modules. In the first two videos, Charles showed you how to set up the hardware and use the evaluation software. In this video, we'll go through the critical process of preparing your fuel gauge's data flash for accurate gauging. The end result will be a golden file that you will use in production to program into every IC. Before we get started, let's talk about why we need to do this process at all. As you may have realized by now, accurately gauging a battery is not trivial. We try to make it as simple as possible, but every battery powered system is different and every battery model is different. There's no way that you can use the default configuration in any gauge, so BQEZ HH or handheld will help you to configure it. Let's go back to the evaluation software. The wizard we will use to prepare this golden file is called BQEZ HH, as you can see at the top here. When you click on BQEZ, you'll see this screen. Briefly, the process is broken down into five steps by each tab at the top. In step one, you will set up your project. In step two, it will ask you some questions to help configure the most common data flash parameters. In step three, you will make sure you've properly calibrated your EVM. And step four is critical because it will help you to select the appropriate chemistry database to load into your gauge. Step five involves cycling to allow the gauge to optimize the chemistry parameters for your particular model of battery. How long might this process take you? Although it's a wizard, it's not really magical and we are limited by the physical reality of charging and discharging the battery. At a minimum, this may take several days, but I recommend you budget about a week in case there are any hiccups and you have to restart any of the cycling processes. Let's talk about one more thing before we dive into the process. What are you really optimizing in step five and why? Let's click to the EV software data flash screen and let me show you the parameters that will get updated. I'll click read all to see what's in the data flash at the moment. The first, which is rather intuitive, is on the gas gauging tab and is called QMAX. I'll click on gas gauging and you can see QMAX cell zero is set at 1000 and QMAX cell one is set at 1000 milliamp hours. These are the default. What QMAX represents is the actual chemical capacity of your battery. So on step five, when you do a full cycle, it'll let the gauge learn the true capacity of your particular pack because it's probably not a thousand milliamp hour. The other thing which will be updated during your learning cycle is the RA or resistance tables. I'll click on the RA table tab here and it shows several different tables which in your golden file will need to all be identical. These RA tables are critical to the gauge's accurate predictions. If you don't optimize QMAX in your RA tables, you might as well not use a gauge at all. So successfully getting through the BQEZ wizard is critical. Thankfully, you only need to do it once and then you're ready for production. Now, let's flip through the pages in BQEZ. I'll click the next button to get started here. In step one, first you'll name your project. I'll call it BQ27505 Demo, since that's the EVM that I'm using. Click next, and in step 1B, you can reload the default data flash parameters if you've been messing around with your EVM already. Note that this will overwrite your calibration data if you previously calibrated the EVM, so you need to repeat calibration if you go ahead and do this step. If you haven't changed anything, you can just skip ahead and click Next. In step two, you'll go through a series of questions to automate configuration of some of the data flash items. More details are in the app notes on ti.com, so I won't spend too much time here. I'll just click Next and go through all these screens. In step three, we'll prompt you to go to the Calibrate screen if you haven't done so already. If you have calibrated already, you can skip through this one. If not, go ahead and calibrate as Charles showed you in the previous video. Just be sure to close the Calibrate sub-window when you are done. If you leave Calibrate open, it's going to be running a lot of calibration routines in the background, so that's why it's critical to be sure to close the sub-window like this and go back to BQEasy. After you finish step 3F, be sure to click Read DFI.
this will take a copy of your data flash from your gauge as it's configured and save it on the hard drive. Let me show you the folder where it stores this. It's in your program files, Texas Instruments, PQ Evaluation Software, Plugins, Projects folder, and you can see the DFI file right here. Next, we'll proceed to step four. In step four, I highly recommend that you do not use the default chemistry. Instead, you can see if your chemistry is in this list. More likely, you'll need to continue to step 4C and perform a cycle to let BQEasy try to find a match. This involves setting up the circuit shown here. If you click on this little picture, it will blow it up. And then allow the EV2300 to automatically pulse the load during discharge. Once you finish this step, it will find the best match and program the chemistry database for that chem ID into your IC. Now we are ready for the final but longest step of all. In step five, you need to go step by step exactly as specified in the software. If you use the circuit in step 4C, you can use it again here. Alternatively, you can manually stop your discharges, but be sure to not let the voltage drop below about 2.8 volts or your battery's protector will probably open up and you'll have to start again. You'll start with a completely empty battery then click this button. Then you will manually charge it to full and wait at least two hours before clicking this button. But before you click that button, let's go to the data RAM screen and make sure that the gauge thinks that the battery is fully charged. If you click refresh, you should see the FC or full charge bit set. If that's not set, something went wrong or your settings are wrong and you're not ready to proceed. But since I do have the FC bit, I'm ready to click the charge wait done since it's been more than two hours since I charged this battery to full. Finally, you will discharge it to empty again and then allow it to relax for at least five hours. You can see my gauge is now showing 0%. And one other thing I want to check before proceeding is in my data flash, if I read all on the gas gauging tab, my update status 0% now should have changed to O2. That will signal that the learning cycle was successful. So when I go back to BQEasy and I click Discharge Done, if everything went properly, I'm all done and I could click the final button and go on to 5B. On 5B, clicking Update Golden Pack will rearrange some of your data flash, set some flags, and output a golden DFI file in the same directory as before. Let's let this process go and I'll show you the final output file. Now that the golden pack has been updated and we get the congratulations message, you'll find the final golden DFI file output in the projects folder on your hard drive. Also, if we go back and reread data flash, you can see the items which were updated in red. For example, the Qmaxes should be learned 1500 milliamp hours for this battery, 1500 milliamp hours for our example. The RA tables are optimized and all match. And these other flags, status and flags here, should be changed as well. Congratulations, you can now take this golden DFI file you created and use it for programming every gauge on your production line. You won't need to perform a learning cycle on any of your systems, just flash the gauge and ship it. There's an app note with more details in the product folder on taking this file in production. I know I glossed through this process in this video and there are some pitfalls you might run into. Keep an eye out for the next video which will address common problems that people usually see when going through BQEasy and performing a proper learning cycle. Until then, thanks for watching and check out our extensive application notes on TI.com, as well as the questions and answers on our E2E forums. If you have any problems, you can search for answers there or post your own questions there for support.